Today we have this nice integral characterized by a parameter s. And the s parameter here is just some positive real number. And of course, after evaluating the general result, we'll look for some interesting results using different values of the parameter. So for reference purposes, it would be nice to call this an integral function i of the parameter s. And I'm going to keep things simple here and just invoke a substitution, letting e to the x equal u. And this implies that x equals the logarithm of u. So this implies further that dx equals 1 by u du. So the integral function i of s in the u world is now an integral from where to where exactly? Well, as x approaches 0, we'll have u approach e to the 0, which is 1. So we have 1 as the lower limit and infinity as the upper limit still. So we have the differential element transformed into this sort of structure. So we have 1 by something times 1 by u du. And that something in the denominator is u plus e to the negative x would be 1 by u, correct? All raised to the s power. So we have the integral from 1 to infinity now of du divided by u squared plus 1 divided by u to the s. And we have this 1 by u factor as well. So we have all of this to the s as well as u to the s in its denominator. So we could just expand using u to the s and that would give us the integral from one to infinity of u to the s times one by u would be u to the s minus one du divided by u squared plus one to the s. Okay, the structure looks pretty nice as well. So let's make another substitution that'll give us something much more familiar. Let u squared equal some other variable, call it t, which implies that u equals t to the one half, which further implies that du equals one half times t to the negative one half dt. So this implies that i of s in the t world now is the integral still from one to infinity because the limits are clearly not bothered by our transformation. t to the, oh, sorry about that, u to the s minus one would be t to the s minus 1 by 2 divided by 1 plus t to the s. And what about the differential element? Well, you have this factor of 1 half outside and t to the negative 1 half as well, dt. So if we multiply out the terms in the numerator, we have 1 half times the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the s minus 2 by 2, which of course can be written as s by 2 minus 1 divided by 1 plus t to the s integration with respect to t. Okay, now the integrand looks a lot like, well, it's exactly the structure needed for the integral representation of the beta function, the second integral representation. But the problem is for the beta function with complex arguments x and y, that's the integral from zero to infinity of t to the x minus one divided by one plus t to the x plus y dt. So the problem here is that we're integrating from one to infinity. So let's see if there's a way to work around this. Well, there is of course. The integral from zero to infinity equals an integral from zero to one plus an integral from one to infinity. So this implies that the integral from 1 to infinity can be written as an integral from 0 to infinity minus an integral from 0 to 1. So that means what we have here is i of s being equal to 1 half times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the s by 2 minus 1 divided by 1 plus t to the s dt minus the integral from 0 to 1 of the same thing, t to the s by 2 minus 1 divided by 1 plus t to the s dt. Now let's evaluate these two integrals one by one. This one I'm calling i sub 1 and this one I'm calling i sub 2. Starting off with i sub 1 and once more writing the beta function evaluated at x and y being the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 divided by 1 plus t to the x plus y we see immediately on comparing the exponents 
for the terms in the numerator and the denominator, that x equals s by 2. And if x plus y equals s, then this implies that y also equals s by 2. So this integral here is just the beta function evaluated at s by 2 and s by 2. Okay, that was pretty easy. But what about the integral i sub 2? That's an integral from 0 to 1 of exactly the same structure as the integrand of the beta function. How do we work our way around this? Well, there is a very, very nice representation of the beta function. There is another integral representation of the beta function that's actually an integral from 0 to 1. And that structure is pretty underrated because it's not seen a lot. Even I haven't used that on the channel, although I invoke the beta and the gamma functions so much. But it's a very, very cool representation of the beta function, a very underrated one and a very cool one. And I'm just going to drive that really quick. So once again, writing out the beta function evaluated at the complex arguments x and y, that can be written as an integral from 0 to 1 plus an integral from 1 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 divided by 1 plus t to the x plus y dt. And for this integral here, I'm going to perform a transformation from the t world, oh, terribly sorry about that, from the t world to the 1 by t world. And that takes dt to the negative 1 by t squared dt world. So in that case, I have this integral here, I'm calling it i sub 3 for the time being. So i sub 3 is an integral now from 1 to 0 of t to the 1 minus x, right? Because 1 by t is just t to the negative 1. And we have this 1 plus t divided by t to the x plus y term in the denominator. And the differential element has this negative sign and a 1 by t squared dt. Now we'll switch up the limits to get rid of the extra negative sign. We'll write this as t to the 1 minus x divided by 1 plus t to the x plus y, where we expand using t to the x plus y. So we have this term up in the numerator, and we also have t to the negative 2. Okay, so all that's left is to multiply out everything in the numerator. So we have t to the 1 minus x plus x plus y minus 2. The x's cancel out pretty nicely. And we have exactly the same denominator as before. And in the numerator, all we're left with is this t to the uh, 1 minus 2, negative 1. So that's y minus 1 there, 1 plus t to the x plus y dt. That's i sub 3. So plugging this result back into the beta function, so that means beta x y equals the integral. Now we have two integrals from 0 to 1, so we can just combine them using the linearity of the integration operator. And we have t to the x minus 1 plus t to the y minus 1 divided by 1 plus t to the x plus y dt. That is extremely cool, and it works perfect for the integral i sub 2. Notice that we can write this as 1 half and we can multiply a 2 in the numerator, hence. So we can write this as 1 half the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the s by 2 minus 1 plus t to the s by 2 minus 1 divided by 1 plus t to the s dt. So on comparing the exponents everywhere in the numerator and denominator, we again see that i sub 2 is just this factor of 1 half times the beta function evaluated at s by 2 and s by 2. Okay, cool. Now let's return to the case of our target integral. So i sub s equaled 1 half the difference of i sub 1 and i sub 2. And we know exactly what i sub 1 was. i sub 1 was the beta function evaluated at s by 2 and s by 2. And i sub 2 is exactly half of that beta function. So you have 1 half, 1 minus 1 half. So that gives you a 1 half multiplied by the 1 half outside. That's just 1 fourth the beta function evaluated at s by 2 and s by 2. And a nice way to write this out would be in terms of the gamma function. So this implies that i of s equals 1 by 4 
times gamma s by 2 times gamma s by 2 divided by gamma s by 2 plus s by 2. So this implies that I sub s equals this really cool looking result of 1 by 4 times gamma square s by 2 divided by gamma s. And now to find some cool looking results for different values of the parameter. We start off with the simple case of s being equal to 1. So i of 1, which is the integral from 0 to infinity of dx divided by e to the x plus e to the negative x. And this equals 1 fourth gamma squared 1 half divided by gamma 1. Now gamma 1 is just 1 while gamma 1 half is famously root pi. So that means you have pi by 4 as a nice, sweet-looking closed form in terms of pi for i of 1. And what about i of 1 half? Well, in that case, we'd have the integral from 0 to infinity of dx divided by the square root of e to the x plus e to the negative x, which is an integral I made a separate video on a short while back. And it's this integral that inspired me to look for this generalized result for any positive real value of s. So in this case, we have 1 by 4 times gamma squared s by 2. So that's going to be 1 by 4 again. And we have gamma 1 half, which is, of course, root pi. And this is a very, very cool looking result. And we can write it in a more compact manner by noting its resemblance to another famous constant, that's the Lemniscate constant. And for that, I needed this root 2 in the denominator. And to balance that out, I need another root 2 as well. So this term here is what's called the Lemniscate constant. So this implies that i of 1 half equals root 2 by 4 times the Lemniscate constant omega bar. And you can find similar nice looking results for other odd integer multiples of one half. For example, um, I of three for other, wait, 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 I said that wrong. You can find nice results for odd values of S. For the fractional values of S, like S equal to one half, this is a cool result and you can get other cool results in terms of the gamma function as well. But for odd integer values of s, like i sub uh, i of 3, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of dx divided by e to the x plus e to the negative x cubed, which sorts out to 1 by 4 times gamma squared 3 by 2 times uh, divided by gamma 3, that is. So we have 1 fourth of gamma 3 halves is 1 half of the root of pi. So that means we have 1 by 4 times pi divided by 2 factorial, which is 2. And this sorts out to pi by 32, just like the case of i of 1 sorting out to pi by 4. So you have nice closed forms for odd integer values of s. And for fractional values of s, we have nice results in terms of the gamma function. Now, what about even integer values. Well, in that case, let's start off with i of 2, which would sort out to 1 by 4 times gamma squared 1 divided by gamma 2. So this is just 1 by 4, right? Okay, similarly, i of 4, terribly sorry about that, i of 4 would be 1 fourth of gamma squared 2 divided by gamma 4, which is 3 factorial. So you have 6 times 4 in the denominator, that's 24, and again, 1 in the numerator. So again, some nice clean results for integer values. And unfortunately, I couldn't find results for exotic numbers like the golden ratio and everything that simplify further, but they do look pretty cool in themselves. For example, as a party trick, you just write out the integral from 0 to infinity of dx divided by e to the x plus e to the negative x to the phi, the golden ratio. And suddenly you just write out the final result as being 1 by 4 times gamma squared phi by 2 divided by gamma phi. 
thus blowing away everyone at the party with your result involving the golden ratio and gamma functions and even squared gamma functions. Yeah, that is cool, isn't it? But anyway, they don't simplify further to get nicer compact forms, but they're pretty exotic in their own right, and I like them, I really do like them. You have similar results for s being equal to root pi, and the older Mascheroni constant, of course. So yeah, they don't simplify further, but they look amazing. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe, comment down whatever results you liked, and some nice results that you've derived. Thank you, see you next time.